Hello fellow educators, my name is Archie. Today I'm here with my team, George, Christina, Jake, Jack, and Reno. We're from a business communication class in Sierra College in Rockland. Today, our objective is to provide you advice, tools, and tips to conduct effective meetings. There's running a meeting and then there's running an effective meeting. An effective meeting is one where preparation is done beforehand. My team is here today to go over productive preparation advice that extends a considerable amount of time before the meeting as well as after the meeting. However, this time after the meeting is beneficial because it aids in retention and appreciation of the material. We will also go over concise and clear communication during the meeting. That's extremely important because your meeting can get taken over by other people, it can be dominated, or people can just not encourage participation and not facilitate an engaging environment, and that can be genuinely detrimental and a waste of time. Feedback during meetings is really important, hence why engagement is so important. It's not only important for the leaders, but it's also important for the participants. Not only are we going to focus on positive feedback, but we're also going to address what to do when a meeting has been taken over by a dominating participant and how to alleviate the situation without hurting anyone's feelings or without making yourself look like the bad guy. And again, straying away from more positive feedback, we're also going to go over how to speak clearly and critically with others regardless of stance. Think back to your time in your education life. Maybe you were in middle school and you were doing a science fair project. Maybe you were in elementary school working on a really awesome art project. But have you ever been in a group where someone has been extremely reclusive and not necessarily rude, but just not very helpful and with nothing to give to the group. This, this person is not effectively contributing. However, we have tips on how to engage with our other team members and how to bring them to life and get them out of their shell and get them to actually open up and contribute and give ideas. Because regardless of interest or education level, it's never a bad thing to have a fresh mind and another opinion and help is always appreciated. Another topic my team is going to go over with you guys today is appropriate meeting size and participation. The meetings are much more than just content and leaders. The meeting environment is as equally important as the content and having a good prepared leader. A, le a meeting is much more than just someone yelling things at people with open ears. Because when you yell things at people with open ears, it goes in one ear and out the other. We want retention and that's what we're going to work on today. According to Jim Ron, the four building blocks of communication, good communication, are interest, fascination, sensitivity, and knowledge. So let's get a little bit interested, a little bit fascinated, a little bit sensitive, and let's get some knowledge. Whether you're a leader or a participant, there are opportunities we can take in order to improve our communication and feedback skills for a more harmonious working environment. I'm gonna be talking about a leader's role in planning meetings. A leader is really the most significant person in the meeting because they're the one who facilitates the meeting. So the most important part of preparing for a meeting is deciding why the meeting needs to happen. What's the goal? What's the job that needs to be accomplished? It's really important that the leader clarifies that for themselves. Once that has been clarified, then the leader can decide who they want to invite to the meeting. Really, who you invite and who you don't invite are equally important. An example from my own experience, uh, I work with a nonprofit and I had to organize a team of volunteers to plan a travel event. Now the thing about working with volunteers is that you really don't want to waste their time because they're not being paid. And the executive director of the nonprofit who is getting paid often likes to come to the meetings and tends to derail them a little bit because he gets really bogged down with some of the accounting details of running the nonprofit. The way I prepared for this eventuality was to have a meeting with the executive director ahead of time where we clarified all the rules and regulations and discussed them so that at the meeting with the team of volunteers, I could pretty easily and um, efficiently give them the information without having to spend a lot of time discussing it. Once you've decided who is going to be at your meeting, you need to organize yourself. You need to make sure you have 
notes, you need to make sure you have paper or pencils or whatever you need to write on. You need to make sure your location is accessible for everyone and that it's comfortable for everyone. Do you have enough chairs? Do you need a table to write on? Do you need some kind of whiteboard or media to, you know, present your material? You also need to um, have a very specific written limited agenda. It's really important that you give everyone a copy of the agenda because then everyone's on the same page and understands exactly what needs to be discussed at the meeting. So when I finally had my meeting, um, the executive director actually showed up anyway and um, you know, still things got slowed down a little bit, but they weren't as bad because I brought an agenda, kind of like this. And you always want to start with the most difficult or the most boring topics because those um, are the hardest to get through and you'd like to get through them while everybody's fresh and has the most energy and the most attention. So we started with fundraising because that's probably the hardest thing for us to discuss and to make decisions about whereas, you know, t-shirts or travel arrangements are quite a bit easier. Because I had an agenda that was pretty specific and limited, the executive director didn't derail me quite as much as if he might have if I had been less organized. Um, once you're done with your meeting, it's really important that you restate the responsibilities and the decisions that were made in the meeting. You want everyone who was at your meeting to leave with a really clear sense of what their responsibility is and you want to have some sort of accountability system. Are you going to call them? Are you going to email them? How are you going to make sure that the tasks are going to get done? It's also important to ask for feedback from the team members that you had the meeting with. You can just simply say, how was the meeting? Did you feel like you got to express your ideas? Do you feel like we were successful and met our goals? These are ways that you can collect feedback, which helps the leader to know how successful they were in accomplishing their job or goals in the meeting. Some of my other fellow students now are going to talk about some of the specific ways that you can communicate in a meeting as a leader, as a participant, so that you can have the most effective meeting possible. So I'm going to talk about what good communication looks like from the leader's perspective during the meeting. So one of the main things you want to do is reprimand in private and praise in the public. So what I mean by that is when you're telling someone to do something a bit better or they could do better next time, definitely do that in private just so the whole group doesn't look at them like they're less than them and they're just not doing anything correctly because that may not be the point you're trying to get across. And even if it is, that's just not a good look for you and the person in general. So praising in public is super important though because it gets everybody to look at that member like they're doing their job and that they know what they're doing and it gets the person's morale to go up and encourages them to do better every single day. So definitely do that and inspire and encourage every single member of your group every time that you get the chance because that's a big importance when it comes to group like bonding and you just you want your whole group to understand that you are proud of them and that they're doing a great job. So just inspire and encourage every chance that you get. Um, definitely speak to your audience in a good tone, loud. Just be confident while you're talking to your audience so they all are kind of involved in your story rather than just being completely in one ear out the other. So definitely do that. Um, decide your group's way of making decisions. So when you're making decisions, you are the one that needs to decide how that's done so everybody's not getting confused about whether or not it's a majority vote or anything like that. You make the decision and you leave it at that. Um, so as the leader, you definitely want to just make sure your whole group is involved at all times. So if someone's not involving themselves as much as they should, you should just involve them more, make sure that they're getting their opinion across and that they're in the meeting as like in their mind and literally there um and then make some people less involved if they're involving themselves a bit too much because they may be taking the spotlight at those that want to get involved but they just can't because maybe they're not as confident to push themselves into that meeting standpoint as being kind of like that second leader 
So definitely do that. Um, understand your audience. For sure, understand your audience at all times. So know who you're talking to. If the audience you know isn't going to like what you're talking about, try to make it enjoyable for them by just kind of getting them involved in some way, shape, or form, or just make it fun for them to listen to. So just through being the leader of the meeting, just make sure that everyone's involved, um, you're confident, um, just know how to inspire and encourage your members, and just make sure to be a great leader. Good morning class, so I'm going to be talking about the participant's role uh, during and before the meeting. So prior to the meeting, uh, one's going to want to study the agenda or the schedule. Uh, it's a good way to keep the meeting moving and on track. Uh, it allows the members to gauge the amount of time they have to discuss certain topics or ideas. Um, you should stick to the agenda or the schedule to eliminate any rambling, decide discussions or chatter so that you can be an effective uh, participant in the meeting. So you're going to want to take into consideration the goal of the meeting so that you can properly be prepared and bring any uh, materials that you need to, so that you can contribute to the meeting effectively. So if you were given material beforehand, uh, you would want to review all of that material so that you can be ready to come into this meeting with 100% focus and knowledge on the topics and that you can be a good contributor and talk about these uh, topics that are necessary. So during the meeting, you're going to want to make sure that all your uh, comments that you want to say or your opinions are on the topic that are being discussed. You don't want to uh, go off track a little bit and start talking about other things because there is an agenda, there is a schedule that, that someone needs to maintain for a certain reason. Um, so you want to make sure that you are sticking to the agenda and staying on topic with uh, the things that are being discussed. So during the meetings, uh, you're going to want to speak during the most appropriate times because a number of good speeches go to waste just because of bad timing. Um, you know, whether or not they got their speech out there, they even voiced it, or um, whether or not it was just the right time after someone else already given an idea. So um, also you have to be open to other ideas. Uh, you got to offer the other members of the meeting the floor. Um, you got to let them have a chance to voice their opinion. And maybe you might change your mind in certain topics because there's a lot of things out there that one doesn't know that could easily change the mind off of uh, the opinion of others. So it's very important to uh, keep your mind open and listen to what other people have to say so that uh, you can be the most effective uh, participant in this meeting. Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about practical ways to communicate in a meeting in order for the meeting to be the most effective. And I have two main points, the first one being dealing with someone who dominates meetings, and I have three sub points to back it up. The first one being accepting comments from the dominator without yielding the floor. So this means that dominator has a lot of good information, a lot of good arguments to bring about, and you want to let him have his floor, let him do his thing, and then your turn will come soon. Um, number two being playing traffic cop with the verbal cue. So you want to be engaged in the discussion. You want to um, bring in other people to the discussion that maybe aren't as um, involved as other people. And this actually ties into the third one being encouraging others by name to enter the discussion who aren't as involved in the meeting. And that's kind of like what I said earlier. A lot of people will just sit back, kind of listen to the discussions without, you know, being the most involved as possible. So, you know, you want to bring, uh, bring up their name, kind of get them into the conversation, get them involved, and yeah. And uh, my second main point being things to avoid in a meeting as a participant, and then I have three sub points, and the first one being start a side conversation with someone um, while someone else is talking. That's really rude, disrespectful, you know, it's not really the most nice thing to do in a meeting. Um, you wanna be like engaged, you wanna be focused, you wanna be trying to um, like get, achieve a common goal. And uh, the second one being being on your phone. And yeah, it's something else that's very disrespectful. There's a um, time and a place for it, obviously not in the meeting. And my third one being interrupting a speaker to disagree with them. And um, yeah, very rude, very disrespectful. Everyone's here to agree on things. Everyone's here to make discussions. Um, you're obviously not gonna agree on everything, but it's good, it's a good practice and everything. So yeah. So that's following all. everything that my partners have said to have a good, efficient, and effective meeting. 
Start us off with preparation, preparing yourself for the speech, making sure you know everything for it, going through it as the leader and the speaker. You should be able to know the speech back and forth and be able to touch every detail to make sure you're fully focused when the speech time comes. And then when the speech comes, you should be able to carry yourself, talk to the audience, also be able to be a good listener as you speak and giving communication to everybody and making sure they stay interactive and you can have actions behind everything you say to make sure everybody is still in it. Then being a good listener is also a key to a good speech or a good leader, period. You should be able to learn how to take anything they may say and turn it into a positive, even if it's criticism, being able to be a good listener, good reciprocator, be able to talk back to them when you need to or when it's best to talk back to the leader or whoever's speaking for the meeting. And all of that is just many the main points of being able to listen, talk, or just in between, basically, of how you should be able to be going on with good, effective, and efficient meetings that all of my partners have stated and then some main points that I went over again today to close everything up for you guys.